Final ranking, Synergy and Genius playing Ducks on 4 and 7. Genius without a victory this season yet, so... We need to find out if today they can change that. Yep, they will be playing next. Be genius, hoping not to go 0 and 12 against the playing Ducks. The playing Ducks are a team that can be a bit inconsistent in terms of how well they are playing. Let's go ahead and check out the schedule here while we start to think about what the playing Ducks can do to make sure that they shut down Be genius. This is going to be the second match later on. North America coming at you guys with Team Neventic and Tempo Storm facing off. No tomorrow and Superstars will end week eight here for North America and Europe. Now to the playing Ducks. What do they have to do here to come out and play against Bee Genius? Give Sport Billy, Zaratul, or Medivh. I actually want to see more play from Nande. Nande, I felt like, did a really solid job the other day uh, in his matchup, the Chen play in particular. They're giving him more opportunities to shine. He's even played Grey Main for them. And uh, as a team, you know, coming together and giving the playmaking ability, the playmaking heroes to different players is a solid pickup. Yeah. I mean, Team Liquid's been doing it forever. I really think this is going to be extremely difficult for Be Genius just simply because we have these playmakers on the side of the playing ducks and oftentimes when they are playing against teams on the same skill level or higher, they are the ones that are getting targeted and it's easier to shut down. I'm not sure at this point if Be Genius has what it takes to shut someone like Sport Billy down or those plays that you've been talking about at the top lane in the solo lane and that's something they have to prove right now because if they are not able to do that, we've seen how absolutely incredibly strong playing ducks can be if uh, sport in particular has uh, has an on day well we have some doubts for the b genus but maybe they have some confidence in themselves let's hear what they think about the matchup occurring today preparing for playing ducks is their strong native play since chris is one of the key player what do i think about b genius as a team so far they've struggled but we still should not underestimate them uh, last time we also had a close 1-3 series, it could have still went either way, we just played late game better. We should like uh, we should not underestimate them and we have to say prepare really well for them, they can always upset, never know. But they are already in the Crucible, so maybe they are already thinking about um, the Ope Division teams. Of course, we don't want to be the team that drops the one game to the last place team in the league. But you never know, they're, um, they're still a good team, I mean they made it into the AGC. They're not bad, they just got a bit outclassed by the other teams. We don't know, but we're obviously going to try our hardest against the leaders too. Chris brings up a good point. The last time these teams faced off, the late game was just much better for the playing Ducks, but that seems to be the theme always with Bee Genius. The early game, they always have moments of, okay, wow, this team is getting aggressive, they're bringing out what they know best, and then they just see to peter out always toward the end of the game, whether it's throwing on a keep or making a poor miss a shot call or being behind 20 to 18 and forcing a fight. B Genius just needs to clear up these late game scenarios and try to play to their style. They definitely have to. Chris was just talking about how B Genius got a bit outclassed this season. And just to put that in perspective real quickly, they have a record in this second part of our first season of 12 losses and only a single map win. That's how bad it is. They lost every single one of their games with a 3-0, with one exception, and that was on the first play day against Team Synergy. Against Synergy, they were able to take a single map. That is brutal. It is pretty brutal. Let's go ahead and get the series started here. Game number one, which battleground are we going to? It is going to be Infernal Shrines. The Bee Genius has chosen the battleground. So far, what we have seen on Infernal Shrines by Bee Genius were double support combos that did not work whatsoever. This is something that I really want them to break, that pattern that they had there. The double support can work if you combo it properly when they get their Vala, but oftentimes teams have already started to identify that this is one of the heroes that is really crucial for them to make these plays happen. And one of the times when they tried to do it, they also ran a solo Anubarak with only Cocoon available yeah. on level 10, and that just didn't work out for them. Anubarak was always on the back foot. Every time he went in, he was immediately targeted, had to move back, they didn't have a tank anymore, and then they lost the team fight. So they have to do one of two things. Either you get a different strategy in and don't play the double support, or if you play with a double support, then you get your hyper carry and you have still the double front line to ensure safety. Yeah, they seem to be a team that's trying to figure out maybe we're just not playing meta enough. They started to adopt a lot of Gul'dan the last couple of games uh, and it just did not pan out for them at all. The one game that it really felt like BGS was in their element is when they picked up Racer. Now again, that was against Probius where they got to be aggressive, but that type of style, the I can dive in and try to solo carry my team with the aid of my teammates being around and we go for the hard engages are one of the ways that BGS can move in. Look what playing Ducks is doing. Oriel Ben. 
you don't see that against any other team. You see it against Be Genius because, as I just said, they know on Infernal Shrines, Be Genius loves to play these double support combos, and even though they're not working, the Ducks are just simply saying, you know what, we know that's the one strategy you seem to be playing solely on this map. So, yeah, there's a ban on Aurel. How are you going to deal with that now? Yeah, when it comes to the uh, Be Genius team, if you can come in and put discomfort on them, they seem to fall far even more. So getting rid of the Aureal is definitely a strategy you can pull off. You couldn't pull this off against a top tier team or even a team like an Expert, but for Be Genius, it's a valid strategy, and playing Ducks comes out of the gate swinging. And for playing Ducks, this is an important game. And Chris just said we can't, we would have to take this seriously. This is one of those matches that matters to us a lot. If you think about it, to be genius, it does matter because it's about pride. They want to make sure that they are winning games in HTC. Nobody wants to be the team that went out of the first season without winning a single match. So they are literally the team that has nothing to lose anymore. They can go aggressive, they can risk something. Playing Ducks are in a situation where every single win matters. They need to have a good point, a good spot going into the playoffs. They want to secure that, so they have to make sure that they're preparing. And you see that they analyzed exactly what Beginus is doing. They didn't look at the standings and said, these guys haven't won a single match, we don't even have to prepare for them, we're going to crush them. Yep. They analyze the playstyle, they analyze the maps, they analyze the strategies, they take Vala away from them, they ban out the Oriel, and they're saying we need to win this, and ideally with a 3-0 because we need those points. Yeah, that's a good point too. The Vala being picked up great for the playing Ducks as a hero they've ran pretty often, but one that Be Genius usually has started moving into, just like we've seen from Synergy. They love that Vala gameplay, something that they can bring aggressive play into. So playing Ducks, again, I've done their research, and they're in a spot here where they could be on the coattails of Expert, maybe get to a point where they can start competing with them, and they're also fighting for being better than Tricked Esport in the standings. So this moment, so important for the playing Ducks. Now, Be Genius on their side here. Let's see where they start to rotate into. Last couple times that we've seen them play, it was Goldam, but with Goldam being banned out by themselves here, that's not the answer. Think about what we're seeing right now. This is the map choice of Be Genius, and normally when we are having that play, it's really ban, ban, pick, pick. And then the drafts start to be drawing out a little bit longer. This is the first rotation for Be Genius, and they're already in a position where they are using the entire time frame because that Oriel ban and that Vala pickup was definitely something that they did not expect to that extent. They have still good heroes to take. This is a great start for them with a Grey Main and a Lucio. Not so sure if you needed to prioritize Lucio to that extent, but I love Greyman in the setup. And with the Lucio, they have other options that they can use and later on. We've seen him played a lot with the Tychus as an addition. Uh, Arthas becomes an option. But this is definitely something that gave them a lot to think about. We don't have access to Vala. Our double support comp is to a certain extent shut down. They could still play it with Lucio Malfurion. and they've done it before. So that's something that playing Ducks could also pick up on right now. They could ban a second support or they could simply take Malfurion for themselves. Another thing playing Ducks could do here too is seeing that BGN is taking a while on their picks after the first couple of bans, you pick faster. You just keep accelerating the draft as quick as you can and you keep BGN on the back foot. Yeah. Playing Ducks though, taking the opportunity to select through what they would like to grab here. Choice is still floating around. One thing to always wonder about when you're watching the playing Ducks is do we move into that Johanna, something that Chris Explosion really loves to play. What you just said is a really good point. You normally don't see that when we're having teams face each other that are on a very high level and on, on, on the same play level because there's a lot of mind games going into this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. There's so much to talk about here. But accelerating drafts, when you play against a team where you feel that your biggest strength over them is drafting and you know that you have better hero pools, accelerating the draft is absolutely something that you can do because you trust, don't use your entire time up because it gives your opponent also time to think. Yeah. And if you just accelerate that all the time and you try to exploit their weakness in certain hero pools, it's something that pressures them to an extent where they will make mistakes. And this is something that the playing ducks can definitely do here. What they do though is they pick up the Tassa that was so far neglected and the Malfurion. So all of a sudden, we have a double support hyper carry composition for playing ducks and BG is looking at a solo Lucio and they don't have access to that good, strong double support synergy any longer that they normally run on this map. Arthas being banned out for BGNIS, they're not wanting to move into it, which is so confusing to me, again, with Danatan being the original Arthas runner, and they just don't run with him anymore. It seems like they don't trust him to do the flanks that are necessary for Arthas to be effective. They normally put him on tanks like a Nubrak, Johanna to agree to get the explosive engages. Now, there is something to be said here. Now, if you ban out Arthas and you pick up Johanna for yourself, playing Ducks can be forced a different route to play a tank that might not be the most effective for Chris Bosian, but Chris Bosian has shown a lot of progress so far. Look at their ban here, Zarya. They were really looking at, okay, what fits as double support right now? What could happen? And they just say, Saria, shields, it's the one thing that we can come up with right now, so let's just ban her out as well. 
not quite the standard support, but still like that middle role between a tank and a support that we oftentimes see and of course normally used to enable someone uh, like Greymane. Yeah. It also be a Sonya that comes in a bit later on in the draft. But I like I like a lot what the player and Ducks are doing with that draft against Vigenius. Yeah, it's the shields that are given by Zarya are a nice band-aid. There's that Johanna in the Ragnaros so Vigenius are attempting to take away the Johanna from their opponent. Uh, so Greymane now is kind of just a floater by himself here. Typically you want to have that Zarya or the Tassel or the double support that you've been mentioning to give Greymane that band-aid for when he goes in the engages. And to be honest, Kirvois in particular is someone that does kind of get out of position occasionally, Greyman's going to have a difficult time. Barry and Anubarak. For the Ducks? Yeah. Yeah. Card engage, you get a new back for the dive, make a big messy mess in that back line. I mean, you have options here at this point, but if you get a variant, for example, you already have a hero that is very difficult to kill thanks to the parry build. He has a Tassadar and a Malfurion behind him, so you can use that. It's very difficult to drop him. If you want then add another tank to his side, you can argue that Chiril is a very good comp for you, or you can just go into the back line with the Anubarak. One way or another, you have a taunt against Greyman when he starts to jump in. You can use around, you can play around a sanctification if you would rather take the Chiril here. So there's definitely a lot of options for the front line that playing Ducks can use now to put B Genius in an extremely uncomfortable position. What do you think about Varian to Haka? Yeah. Ooh, Varian Sonya. Sonya. Okay, so we get our engage here, and we also get Sonya here that can move in and clear out the shrines, but also the same problem that we saw earlier with Dignitas. There's not much control for that Sonya. And the Sonya is supported by two supports now. Yeah. This is a scary draft. Playing Ducks in a really good spot for both the battleground and for being comfortable. They get to have Bala here on Chris, who can just work in those auto attacks and be a complete pain. There's no cleanse on the side of B Genius, so Varian gains even more value. Of course, trading cooldowns with Taunt is something that you normally try to avoid because cleanse is on 60 seconds, Taunt is only on 12, so Varian is going to win out that battle no matter what. But it's still something where if you if your opponent stacks another ult on top of the taunt and you can trade the cleanse for both, then you're in a decent spot. But overall, the playing ducks are currently completely outdrafting B-Genius here. B-Genius on their fifth pick here. What are they going to be moving into for their final pickup? It's going to be a bit difficult. Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe just delaying the game forever, or are they going to go for the accelerated approach? They pick up Sylvanas, hoping to get into fights and really rotate out the shrines. I don't really see that. Um, okay, so I'm confused. Here's why you're confused. They don't have a shrine control, which means they're not going to get punishers that easy, which means they can't get any value out of Sylvanas. That is one of the reasons. Also, Ragnaros is usually a hero that, besides being a great solo laner, he's also oftentimes used because you want to slow down the game a yeah. bit more. It's not really that you're going into the, that you're necessarily picking him for that only reason. As I said, he's a good solo laner, has the AoE that he brings to the table, he's another frontliner you can use as a self-sustain. But the Sylvana is exactly the other approach. You want to speed the game up. And as you said, the shrine control is going to be absolutely crucial. The sustain that we have on the side of their opponent is quite strong. So the only way they, the only way that I see them take this is if they heavily snowball with the first few Punishers because they might win the first one, but after Taunt, it becomes incredibly difficult for them to uh, maintain control over the Shrine with this. Just for the sake of discussion, there's also Gorilla Tactics here that are available. You lose the Shrine phase, you're no longer going to lose it, so you use your Ragnaros to defend the push that's coming in from the Punisher, and you take Greyman and Sylvanas and you push on the opposing team and maybe try to outpush, get a Ford or two, and then come back and defend. So there is things you can use here for B Genius, but what you normally see in Europe, the linear drafts, this isn't something that we see from B Genius. Yeah, playing, I like the draft of playing Ducks a lot. They definitely put thought into this. They looked at the last few games that were played by their opponent on this particular map, and they identified, okay, this is the tools they usually use. This is how they do it. We start banning it out. We take the rest away from them. So it was a ban on Aureal. That already takes one of the points away. You pick the Vala for yourself. That eliminates the hyper carry, and that puts them into an incredibly good spot for this first match. I really think playing Ducks they are going to walk away with victory here from uh, what we are seeing so far. Well, we'll see if BG just has a surprise up their sleeves here for the playing Ducks. It's game number one on this best of five series. Let's move into Infernal Shrines. The game is starting up, and it's the first game in the best of five series between B Genius and the playing Ducks. B Genius, they have to prove something for their fans and to themselves. We have Tank on Johanna, Danatan on Greyman, Kieva on Ragnaros, Arakane on Sylvanas and Unstable on Lucio. 
playing ducks to the right here. We're gonna have Chris on his girl Vala. Wolf Joe played by are playing Malfurion. Gonna have Sport Billy on the Tassadar. Chris Flosion on Varian, and last but not least, Nande on Sonya. Nanda on the Sonya here, strong double support in the back line and the front to help Chris carry his team to victory with a hyper carry Vala here. So this is definitely something where all, a lot of the pressure is going, when it comes to damage is going to be on Chris and also on, of course on Sonya. But it's the only range carry that we have is the Vala and Malfurion is going to try and uh, keep her safe together of course with Hasada that allows Chris to go all the way to the limit and really get these auto attacks in. They have the wave clear also that they need with, thanks to the storm, we have Sonya. So this is definitely a game where the pressure is going to come from the playing ducks. And I'm curious to see how exactly the uh, opponents, you know, B-Genius is going to approach this. Yeah, especially with how B-Genius likes to play the game. They like to have the early game aggression go in for a hard engage and get a couple of pickoffs. Maybe their idea here is we keep rotating Sylvanas and have the playing ducks chase it a little bit. And then Greymane moves in with the Johanna, gets a pick or two. But it is going to be a little bit on the difficult side. Trying to find ways here for B-Genius to make this composition work. Yeah. It's also about the split that we have now. To the top lane, we should see Ragnaros going up against the Sonya. Mm -hmm. That gives you a four-man for the playing ducks with two supports, the Vala and Varian. So that should be quite safe. For the other team, we have, of course, still the Greymane factor in here with Johanna that can maybe cause a bit of an interrupt. Sylvanas might enable them to push it a little bit stronger here and get a few structures in the early game, but it's really going to be about the early punishers in the match, I think. Well, let's go back into it. Let's see how this all shakes out now as our pause has been unpaused. Set up in the middle, we do have actually Sonya and Greymane in the top lane as the playing Ducks were in a spot on their mouse to make sure they could rotate they saw that Sylvanas. That is interesting to see the Greymane instead of Ragnaros going into the solo lane now. Huh. BGNS changing everything we know about the video game here. Rotating Johanna and Ragnaros are hoping to clear oh, out these okay. waves. Sylvanas makes a move to the top here to help out. All right, that's starting to make a little bit more sense. If they actually want to uh, just switch over at the top lane and saying they're going to uh, put two people on the top and trying to pressure with Arakane to disable the towers and then Danatan to apply some pressure, that could work a bit better. But Chris is rotating over to the top immediately. So... They apparently just say we can not win with a normal split, so we're going for something a little bit different, which puts now two supports to hold the two lanes. Interrupt attempt over here against Sport Billy, trying to just delay the rotations. So in the end, what they are attempting to do is just force two heroes up to the top so that the rotation between mid and the bottom is going to be a double support and variant rotation. That makes it a little bit weaker for the playing ducks. Not sure if that's going to give you enough value. But that Greyman up to the top still solo as Sonya, uh, sorry, Sylvanas rotated down. Yep. He's just trying to catch the ducks with their pants down. The ducks, though, respond pretty well. Tacit are rotating between the middle and the bottom. We're going to be able to clear out those waves pretty well. And shouldn't lose any turrets with the ability to shield. Ducks are just well equipped to deal with this odd pressure that continues to happen here from the Big Genius team. Now, four right around the corner for our teams as the Infernal Shrine does pop up, and it is going to be the Punisher, which is probably one of the most deadly ones you can get. Yeah, and the well-equipped ducks are already on the Shrine right now, and we have still up to the top lane a bit of pressure happening. Sylvanas and Greymane apparently just pushing in, so Big Genius is playing around the Shrine. We've seen this a lot more happening in HTC Europe, especially in the first Punisher. The teams are willing to give it up, but the rotation of the Ducks is happening, and they are picking up the experience here. They lost the tower, but they are going to be walking away with the first Punisher no matter what. Yep, they have a substantial lead, 29 to 3. Kirwa has attempted to grab whatever he can. He gets a good measly 4. Picked up on the Shrine, but Nande will be able to clear that out. I'm watching top lane, Vala staying up there, still there with the aid of uh, his tank, Chris Explosion. They can engage on Greyman at any point. And the playing ducks just take everything on the map now. They're grabbing mercenaries to the right. And they're delaying the Punisher. So they have 39 stacks. They don't take the last one. They're going for the uh, mercenaries first of all. We've seen that delay tactic happen a lot. And up to the top lane. It's always these constant rotations as Greyman is holding the top with Sylvanas trying to assist him to get some value on that lane. But an invade on the camp to the left is going to make them pay for it. So they're losing out on their mercenary camp. It's two camps that are now taken. The top lane is heavily pressured, though. And this is the one thing that BG Genius can really do. Try to split push a bit with the help of Sylvanas. The ducks are rotating in, though. To stop that fort from being killed off, Nande will engage first. Chris on the left side. With Unstable showing up, Chris will have to position safely and defend against that push coming in. Now, 
Let's see what the Ducks can do with the Punisher in the bottom. They have two camps pushing in the middle. They have one Punisher pushing in here with the aid of support. Wolf Joe moving in. If they can get decent damage on that fort before the Molten Core pops off, that is a decent win for them. The Ragnaros uses the Molten Core, though, and B Genius will defend. Yeah, B Genius is defending here and takes the earlier level 7 talent. Zero kills in the game so far. More Punisher is about to be taken out, but everybody else is moving into the mid lane. Level 7 talents on both sides. The Genius actually had a nice experience lead there, and they've gotten enough pressure on the top to where we're going to have a lot of respect from the Ducks. They put Sonya up there, they keep putting Varian near that rotation so he can move in for a gank if Sylvanas does ever move into the area. And overall, B Genius does pretty solid, but this is where Chris, blows, or Chris starts to become a bit of a threat. Getting those multi-shot talents being set up here, he can start poking pretty heavily here, working those auto attacks. And once Ten's here, Chris Bojan forces and gauges. Okay, here's one of the problems with this particular strategy. You can slow down the early game and you can trade well on B Genius' side. The problem for them comes really into the later stage of the game when those Punishers scale to an extent where you just simply cannot afford to make these plays anymore because the Punisher value is increasing. So uh, then you have to play around this in a different way. You cannot just simply give up these shrines all game long. That's one of the things that they have to consider here. But as you said, once level 10 is in, there's of course other dynamics that start to cater towards what we're seeing. The Wailing Arrow is going to become a thing. We're going to see Greymane moving in too. And if they can maybe with a good Ragnaros old snipe someone here, that would also just lead to it. And this combo between Ragnaros and also Johanna is something that we have seen a bit earlier when Dignitas was playing. The idea is to use the Blessed Shield as an opener and then follow up with a quick ult on Ragnaros I guess ideally Greymane jumps in with that. So you can secure an early kill, especially if Malfurion is not paying attention and misses his cleanse. There's a lot of squishy targets too. Sonya, Tassadar, Vala, Malfurion, you can get all of those. Granted, Tassadar is harder to kill, so is Sonya as well. But there are targets for BG Genius to get here and get the pick off, especially if they nail that Wailing Arrow. 10 is close for them. Now they have soaked pretty well overall. Nine and a half experience, a little bit ahead here of the Ducks. Going ahead and push in this middle too. The turret that they grab in the top is what's so helpful here. It's why they have that slight advantage. Can they utilize it well? Can they actually get a kill or two? We'll have to see. The BGs has actually an edge going into this. They will hit the earlier level 10, but they are not meeting up to the top. Ragnaros is a bit slow down to the bottom, so we should see both of the teams grabbing their 10 roughly around the same time. But now with the move to the top, Eugenius has the heroic, is starting to go in. It's only Sonya over here. The rest of playing ducks are just now moving in. They have their ults, and we have Taunt, of course, now available. The Twilight Dream, Archon, Reign of Vengeance, and Wrath of the Berserker for Sonya. It's uh, judgment time here for the playing ducks as they can go in for a hard engage. They start taking full control <laughs> of the shrine. I was just looking for the tearing there. I was just like, <laughs> what? We have judgment? Uh, that took me a second. <laughs> Nande is up here on the right side. Tank for the win. He's going to be able to start moving in. And BG, just the moment the playing ducks show up, they show that they are scared of the team fight available for the ducks. Very early sound barrier being used. Here comes the Wailing Arrow also. Not as successful as we're hoping for. They're moving in the blind against Chris Plosion, but he can still go for the taunt. A lot of ults blown by BG Genius, and they need to move back. Sport Billy going out of Arkham form here. Reign of Vengeance still available. No Twilight Dreams used yet. And that allows the Ducks to take over the Shrine. Yeah, they dodged the Blessed Shield, which meant essentially the team fight for BG Genius was over. They had no follow-up at Solar Smash. They had no setup either. And so that's going to be a big punisher going to the playing Ducks. And they once again hold on here. 39. They're going to make sure to defend that at some other point. For now, they'll go ahead to move to different lanes, get experience, and force BG Genius to come fight them. Pichini is actually starting to move in. Of course, once again, we have that delay tactic that we've been talking about quite a bit so far. Sonya then secures the last minion for the Ducks. It's still even experience here, but as we said a little bit earlier, this is really the moment when those Punishers oh, are starting to become a bit stronger. And if you, of course, ten take out Sylvanas at the same time, then you're in a pretty decent spot. Yep, Sylvanas dead, big pickoffs, and with the Molten Core and the top, the Plain Ducks can turn their attention towards the bottom left. They take out the well and start attacking this fort. They're going to have Tassadar joining soon, too, after he clears up those uh, Impalers that are pushing in on the fort. Another thing that we have not really touched upon yet, but we also talked about how this split pushing is a thing with Sylvanas, and Greyman was trying to play into those cards is the level one talent Sylvanas is actually Mercenary Queen. So they are really thinking about trying to make sure they get value on other lanes if they can't go for the objective itself. But Sylvanas, of course, falling in that situation need really help with that idea. There's zero kills in this game up to the point where Sylvanas fell, so the playing ducks walk away with the first blood. They get some value out of the Punisher. 
and the fort at the bot lane was eliminated. But it's a pretty slow game regardless. There is a lot where the playing ducks are saying, yeah, we don't need to force anything here, and Virginia seems to be not quite willing to take any big team fights here. I wanted to go into that mercenary queen getting picked up for Sylvanas. So playing ducks realizing that was a talent pickup for Sylv has been aggressive on the mercenary rotations. On the left side in particular, they've got it every single time that it's been available just to make sure that Sylvanas gets no value out of it. The ducks keeping up and making sure to counter those type of talent picks. Now we do have a gauge here on the left side as Nande packs the Wrath. Take for the win on the left side. He does have busted shield. Could turn around and go for an engage, but the problem is Ragnaros isn't nearby for the self here smash, and they're behind a talent tier. We also have with the level 13 talent Vala going into Gloom. That is mainly to deny any combo value that B Genius could push on them. If Vala survives the combo, the question, of course, first of all, is get to you, get to Vala. For that to happen, Chris has to be re really far out, but since he has a double support, that's usually kind of where he wants to be. So with this now, he can negate a lot of the damage that could uh, come out of any potential combo, especially if Greymane starts to go in with Go for the Throat. So that's something that Chris is going to try and do. But this is a very advantageous situation uh, for the Ducks when it comes to structures on the map. They're doing really well so far. But also they have to still keep in mind that any Punisher taken by Beginus is going to get extra value thanks to the Sylvanas factor. That it will. And so far, Beginus has been hanging in there. Oh, do they get it? They get a kill on Tassadar using a couple of their heroics, but still, that's the potential they have. Yeah, that is great. That was awesome. That was exactly the combo that we've been talking about the entire time. Bless shield into a rack kill. And it couldn't have come at a better time. This is actually fantastic for Virginius. This is changing a lot now. And it also says to the Ducks, you don't win that Punisher. So instead we have Sonya pushing the top. But this is where the Sylvana come value comes in. This is a huge opportunity for Virginius. That it is here. 39, they've already got the Shrine set up, so that is theirs for the taking here. Playing Ducks on the right side are going to be waiting for the Tassel to come in before they do force Beginus to grab it. So let's see what happens. This Chris Bosian is already in the area, moving in, looking at Danatan. He goes in for the engage. Here goes the taunt. There's a route to follow up. Vala starts working on auto attacks, and here comes Nande. They're starting to zone them out a bit, but of course there's only one single minion that they need never gonna happen there's the punisher and let's see how much value be genius is going to get out of this one watching sylvanas here she is the most important factor for pushing in this fort let's watch eric Keen as he steps forward takes a turn off the fort there we go tank for the win pushing in now do remember an eight second self fear smash will be available so a big combo could come out rag is not with him though that's the problem he is currently on his way to the top and is going to get some extra experience. Level 16 will soon drop for Be Genius. They are currently with four heroes at the bot lane. I am very surprised that they are just simply moving away, that they are not turning this into a five versus five at the bot lane because they are about to pick 16. They are pushing instead in the middle and try to get another fort here. The Punisher at the bot lane only defended by uh, Sonya. Oh, they go for the Tassadar. And if you're not on point with that combo, he will dimensional shift and he does it. Here's the Archon being popped. They're chasing back Tank for the win. They wanted to wait till 16 to where they had a talent advantage to go in for the combo, but it does not pay off. That was a four versus five they just lost. Dimensional shift is pretty good, man. Yeah. It definitely is. In the, Earlier, the combo was hit a bit better because they had the silence in as well. But right now, that push is stopped. So uh, the Punisher nets them a uh, lead in experience, and they have 16 versus 16. So right now, Be Genius still in a decent position here. They have also taken out now two of the forts, so they are I had in the game. I really would have liked to see the five-man push in the bottom, though. When you have Sylvanas, opportunities come so rarely that you have to push them to the maximum value that you can get. I think a five-man at the bot lane would have been more advantageous for them. We have seen them move into the mid lane uh, quite a bit, but the thing, that we, well, the one thing why I would say push the bot lane is that Punisher was, I think, at 80-85% when they moved through the fort, so that is really enough hit points that with Sylvanas you can get enough out of it. Yeah. And then you can move back, and on the retreat you can still drop the wall in the middle. You don't have to commit to the fort itself, but I think there, there was an opportunity to get a bit more done than what they did. But they still find themselves ahead, so right now they are still in a decent spot here. They're taking the camp again, they're timing it well. And uh, they have, of course, to face another 5 versus 5 over the next shrine. But we have at this point also all of the ults up again, and therefore they should look to combo him once more. Playing Ducks looking for a potential 5v5 or 4v5 here in the middle. They're looking for maybe a dive on Johanna with that Varian leading the charge. Now, Sonya being in the top lane will make this a bit more difficult until Ragnarok shows himself. He will not show himself yet. 
playing Ducks, not sure where all five members are on the battlefield, so they'll be playing a bit safe here. Let's go ahead and look in the middle, though. The Shrine is about to activate in 20 seconds. Chris Bosian looking at Lucio. Oh. <laughs> Unstable <laughs> does retreat. The Ducks with a trap, but the genius paying attention here. Lucio barely out of range of that charge. And once again, the Shrines are active, and we have the genius starting to move in. The Ducks taking position now. It's going to be that 5 versus 5 we've been talking about. Tank looking. Yep, gets the shield clear, reveals Varian. They're starting to move in for it. The lead goes over to the Flying Ducks. 8 to 1 in terms of Shrine Control. Tank for the win. Looking for maybe a Blessed Shield here. Looking at Chris in particular as he's dancing around. Watching now for Tank for the win. Goes in with a Condemn. Parry has been used by Chris Explosion. 18 to 10. Breath of the Berserker already used. We are seeing them moving in once more at this point. Ragnaros dropping whatever he can. The boulder once more. Roots on the ground locking him down. Wailing Arrow comes in. They jump on Varian. There's silence as Malfurion is just completely obliterating everything. The entire attempt of B Genius to go in. Silence by Malfurion and it results in them losing four heroes. They oh are my, going to no lose way. five and not even Vala dying because of a great taunt from Chris Plosion. Gotta call out Wolf Joe there. The perfect cleanse on Chris to make sure he didn't get locked down by that Blessed Shield so there's no combo coming out. And then he steps forward and brings up the Twilight Dream. In fact, let's look at the replay. Look here. at Wolf Joe. Watch Sport Billy here on the left side and Wolf Joe over the top right. The supports here do such a great job. Sport Billy using the Archon to pressure in on the left side. We're gonna watch for Johanna as he starts to move forward. Chris on the side is gonna get hit by the Blessed Shield when it does pop in. So see if that pops out, and then Wolf Joe will bring out the cleanse and do the Twilight Dream. Yeah, that Twilight Dream, everyone, they are so pumped. Beach Genius is so pumped at this point. They are starting to engage Wolf Joe the entire time with the roots on the ground. There comes the shield. Silence doesn't hit him and goes in, and he's like, Shh. everyone quiet. Quiet. Shh. And <laughs> boom. <laughs> they eventually goes in for the kill. And let's go back to the game here. 20 hit for the Plain Ducks. Five members here keep low on health. They are looking at a core. Bala starts wailing on top of it. Yeah, they are just going for a nice dodge with the Ice Block against the Ragnaros ult. Really, no, was not the ult, sorry. It was just the normal Molten Core hit that we saw there. My bad. Wolf Joe is still in. They're going for it, and they're trying to drop the core, and this is just going to be game. A slow game, but one that ramps up towards the end. The playing Ducks gained the first victory in this best of five series over B Genius. Yeah, and I could actually troll it. It was, of course, the still for us match that we saw there. Sometimes that timer at the top just gets me. So, yeah. A little fire, man. Throwing Jeb baited. You out. Jeb baited, outplayed, outskilled right Kaldor. There. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the playing Ducks right now are just a, a little bit more brought together, more cohesive unit than the B Genius team right now. The draft was a bit odd, but you can see what they were going for. And I'm okay with unorthodox, right? B Genius, they you're at a point where you're just playing for something. You want to get a win on the board before you go into the Crucible. However, playing Ducks were just ready for it. Their rotations were on point. They were in the right corner at the right time. They dealt with a gray man and Sylvanas in the top. Uh, a couple of moments.